So well, we'll see what they're feeling this time because we are right into draft for game three. We got BMO back on the blue side, JBB on the red, and bands are coming in. Anivia yep. and Graves taken away uh, on the side of BMO as well as Senna and Zerath and uh, Hecarim taken away from JBB. We'll see what their third ban is, say if they do want to um, remove something like the Aurelian Soul. They are taking away Azir. We know there's a lot of Azir in Lucan's match history, so trying to get him off of those champions, and could we see the Aurelian Soul coming in again for BMO? Yeah, very yeah. possibly. I think that Lucan as a player is much more of a role player and a picks like Aurelian Soul and uh, potentially even Bantheon uh, leaks, by the way. Uh, uh, <laughs> could come out, but they do opt for the Nocturne, which honestly could go mid, too. We haven't seen mm -hmm. mid-Nocturne in a long time, but it's definitely yep. still possible. Yep, it's possible. Uh, I would like to see the, that Pantheon. I think it's a nice idea for Lucan to play, get that early aggression going, and try to make picks yeah. around the map. I know that he likes to be proactive as a player, so could work but jbb with the response on red side what will they choose to go for for their last pick is the question really going for the counters here but kaiza is being hovered as the adc position and maybe jbb are taking uh taking a little bit of a different approach here to that bot lane yeah it's the silver um we've seen uh jbb's bot lane play silver before it was totally fine um i think silver worked out perfectly great um the thing is with server she's not a solo carry until later into the game um she kind of takes a lot of time to scale up and until then she kind of does damage but she doesn't have like you know lethal damage um right. so she needs to be paired up with other champions that can kind of follow up on her and use her ultimate to the full effect set is one of them um but again it's the set support thing is it's just it's really hard to execute comparatively to something like leona or her nautilus it takes a lot of uh, flanking and, and positioning and knowledge to use him effectively. As we see the Jinx Lulu here, which mm -hmm. I adore because Jinx Lulu is very easy to pull off and is extremely powerful. Stefano, I know you'll have some thoughts on the Jinx Lulu matchup against Sivir Set. Looking for that hyper carry potential in the late game. I, I honestly, what's, what, what's interesting about both these bot lanes is that um, neither neither of them should uh neither of them really should be having too big of an impact um in the early game especially like ideally both of them won't be like trading and killing each other both sides would be okay just to farm up a little bit Sivir to scale with the utility of her ultimate and jinx to scale with the utility of her killing everyone um with the lulu so a little bit of less of a bot focused match is what I predict for this game, with both, both the bot lanes being seen at this early in the draft. We pick up Lilia as well in the jungle, and like you said, Kang, Nocturne could be going into the mid lane, but we have seen it in jungle in this series already before, so likely looking for that. Lilia is an interesting one, though. So much team fight power when you get there, but not a lot of early game pressure for ganks. So Lilia definitely taking a little bit to scale up, and uh, BMO scaling is the name of the game for them. As well, Orn picked up again. We're going to see Bahu Utot, who looked very strong in the top lane on that. So BMO have to take the last two, and it does look like they're, like they're going to have to pick mid blind. Yeah. JBB saving the mid counter pick is a very smart matchup. Both these games, Lucan has had a considerable impact. So really making sure that Lucan isn't able to you know get one of these Zareth esque games off again will be good for the side of JBB. And the Aatrox is picked to counteract that Orn. Aatrox versus Orn up there in the top lane. Aatrox definitely does well into those tanks, in in particular in as we scale later and later into the game, Aatrox getting more and more healing. And BMO waiting for the last second, and it's a rumble blind oh. into mid lane. What is going on here? I don't think we've seen Lucan mm. on rumble yet. Well, the, the, yeah, the easy ahead. answer... Oh, sorry, I was going to say the easy answer for what's going on is BMO is throwing in draft. Um, <laughs> so Rumble, uh, awful champion, doesn't have a mythic item to buy. They are going to shove him blind mid, which seems like one of the most ambitious things I've ever seen. And sure enough, it is going to be Victor, who is going to have a very easy time dealing with this. 
All right, hear me out though. What about mm. Nocturne Mid Rumble in the Jungle? Could it okay. happen? Now we're talking. Oh, <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> I I honestly like I would be very cool. I don't know if they play it. Rumble Jungle definitely is pretty niche, even more niche than Rumble Mid. Like you said, Rumble is not a strong champion on this patch. Uh, it is mm. got to be one of the lowest uh, play rate champions. And uh, win rate can't be that far behind either. So Victor is the choice for JBB. You definitely have to assume they have a good matchup there. But overall, these compositions, Kang, uh, what are you leaning towards? Do you think the Jinx Lulu scaling can overcome the weakness of Rumble? Uh, I mean, aside from the fact that Rumble mid is weak in general, I just think that Rumble's kit as a whole, especially with the Equalizer, there's no real way they can lock down the other team enough for that right. Equalizer to actually matter. So, honestly, I think I have to give the edge to Joe's big biceps once again. I I like the idea, but I just don't know if... Not that if they can pull it off but if it's going to be easy enough to pull off you know what i mean like it just right. seems really difficult and i don't know if they're going to be able to just execute well natural while we got a moment well, let's hear your breakdown of these two teams as well and your prediction after that i'm i'm gonna go for bmo um just because i I believe in the Jinx Lulu. <laughs> hmm. I'm I'm hoping in it. You know, I um, no bamboozles has been a bit questionable with his positioning, but maybe the Lulu uh, will help him out with that. Um, and the Rumble pick, we talked about it a little bit. Rumble mid isn't great right now, but he can still do stuff. You know, I saw it in uh, pro play. I believe it was yesterday or the week before. I'm not too sure. Um, yeah. And he performed pretty well. <laughs> Yeah, so sorry, it's go. picked in LCK, yeah. Yeah, it was picked in LCK, that's right. And despite going like 0 and 6 or something, he still did an absurd amount of damage. Um, yeah, long story short, BMO. BMO. Stefano, what about you? Will JBB take three or will BMO have something to show? I don't know. I was trying to go for a run. Don't worry. You know what? what? Who's going to win? I, I feel like J Joe's big biceps are going to flex with the uh, second win of the night here. I think that. They have a solid front line with a huge range back line, as well as Lilia, who's incredibly versatile. BMO's comp can only really be played um, played around the Jinx. And uh, so far, what I've seen of No Bamboozle seems to be having a little bit of an off day, and it's going to be on him to deal almost all of the damage. So my money's on JBB. All right. Well, we'll see if JBB can send BMO to the nursing home or if BMO can... Nice. Well can uh, out-muscle Joe's big biceps. We will find out right after this in Game 3 on the Canadian Esports Championship Series. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back to our third and final game of tonight of BMO vs. JBB. We're at 1-1, of course, as uh, we will be seeing both of these teams battle it out for the last time tonight. We already talked about our predictions a little bit. We will be seeing a bit of a standard start here. It looks like a bit of a five-pointer. Nothing too exciting for now. Yeah, it should be a pretty standard early game, is what I would say if I was looking at the comps and not looking at the players. However, uh, knowing the side of BMO and JBB, they're going to be down each other's throats, and you can already see a little bit of that on the top side. Uh, J Beach sniffing out a little bit of an engage, but or a little bit of an invade, but she's gonna drop the ward back off to red buff. So looks like it should be a pretty standard start by the junglers as well. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna see a bit of a bit uh, of trading here. Nothing too much. Just cool down. This is uh, the Birdman on this Victor, of course. The Birdman has been performing pretty well uh, in my mm -hmm. opinion, uh, especially for having his main being pretty much perma banned. Uh, of course, that uh, Anivia that we uh, we saw, I think, only once in this whole entire league, which is a little I, unfortunate, know, but... Um... I wouldn't be surprised if that was the only time we've seen it. That that yeah. one game he played was absolutely monstrous. His Luke and 
taking the early advantage, starting the E, you get some mm-hmm. early poke down. Yeah. Um, usually, I do believe it's the flamethrower that rumble uh, maxes first. But, you know, getting that uh, that extra poke, I guess, will be uh, pretty helpful. As a victor, of course, scaling monster, uh, infinite uh, wave clearing mage technician thing. <laughs> yeah, accurate, accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, totally accurate description. As um, One thing I do want to note is that Sacknut does have the Dark Harvest, so he's probably going to go for more of that damaged Lilia. As we see more trading here in the mid lane, nothing too, too massive for now. Yeah. There um, shouldn't be anything too explosive, as I was saying. We see, though, JVB already going to push up early. Uh, not too unexpected. Obviously, Zivir, the best pushing AD carry in the game by a good margin. Even early, um, she's going to be able to get, get some advantage like that. Um, pair it with a set for some easy lane dominance, and it should be... A, should be uh, able to get a little bit of advantage in the bottom lane for this out of JVB. Living, yeah. looking aggressive. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we were we were uh, trash talking the Rumble pick a little bit, but it looks like he's doing pretty well on it. In fact, he's doing just fine. He's a bit uh, down on CS, but uh, of course, HP matters a lot more than uh, CS until you go back to base. That is. As uh, yeah, we see a bit of trading uh, everywhere on the map. We see Sacknut. Pathing towards the bot side, as he is currently doing his blue and now his gromp. As we see here, a bit of an all-in here coming down in the bot lane. The Polymorph will come down onto GG Denied, and so will the Exhaust. But they do manage to force out the Flash, and of course the Exhaust on Animating Dread, which is pretty big. Uh, because Kid Kirito and GG Denied only use the Ignite themselves. So now if Amazing Dread, um, excuse me, Animating Dread... Uh, steps up a little too close, and that is still not the right name. It's Animating Dead. Caster, by the way. Um, Damn, got it. Yeah, yeah, we got it, we got it. Uh, gets caught out a little bit here. Uh, but Baku Tota as well, he's going to get feared back in towards the lane. But uh, it doesn't look like they haven't the damage to finish that out. Anyways, my point was that if Lulu steps up to set again, she dies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Kid Karito still does have the flash. As you were saying, so obviously a lot of kill pressure here. They just saw the jungler topside, so it should be very, very free for them just to keep pushing. There's only been a 5 CS lead, but now that marks two games in a row where the bot lane of JBB has forced the flash out of animating dead. Um, they haven't gotten the kill either game, but even still, strong early laning coming in from the side of JBB. Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing a bit of a, a, bit of a skill difference definitely in this series in the bot lane. I'll we'll have to see if it uh, actually translates into Luke something. Lucan has helpful. Ignite. Uh, yeah, and it looks like the Birdman is just dead. Uh, but here, Lucan is definitely quite far up in the lane. And without the Flash on the Ignite, this should be just a free kill for Sacknut. It is indeed. So that kill will be traded. But at what cost? The Birdman does have the Teleport. So he can come back to lane if he wishes. But it looks like Sacknut will just crash the wave. And the Birdman will get to conserve his Teleport. Yeah. Aggressive play by Lucan, but that is the sort of play that you're going to have to be looking for when you're playing this Rumble with Ignite mid. He's into the Birdman, who has um, obviously no uh, no combat summoner on his secondary. So it is going to be on Lucan to try to get these pressures. And it does look like he's going for the Night Harvester build. Um, one of Rumble's only real options, um, as obviously can't build the Andres anymore now that it gives mana. Um, and... Uh, it is, uh, but unfortunately, Night Harvest are obviously famously underpowered at an item. Uh, not good, so it's going to force onto him. So it does ah. just gonna mean Lucan is going to have to be a little bit farther ahead if he wants to keep up his damage. A follower of LS, I see. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Night Harvester is... It's all right. It's all right. I don't think it's super underrated or overrated. I think it's uh, just about right. As we do see the sleep coming here, and so is the equalizer. But that equalizer isn't actually going to do much, as Lucan is now slowed, stunned by the gravity field. And the kill is going to go to the Birdman, as BMO at least trade it for Drake. But uh, that is Drake number one, and it's a cloud Drake. So this is definitely going to make JBV very happy. Yeah, that was a smart play by um, by Sacknut. They know Lucan doesn't have the flash mid lane anymore. This is going to cost Sacknut's flash just to guarantee that sleep, but even still, definitely worth it. 
that gives Victor the CS lead now. He has control in the lane as well. So Victor, and quite a bit of a position up now after the two games. Yeah, uh, good job there by Sacknut, uh, hovering around the mid lane. Uh, as we see a bit of a trading here down in the top lane, but nothing too aggressive yet. I mean, of course, it's Orin, you know, he's not a... Not playing Riven or <laughs> Aurelia. Um, as, yeah, uh, BMO here trying to freeze the lane, but that is uh, way too thick of a lane to freeze, especially when you have a Sivir that can just queue, in you, in, queue you in the face. Mm -hmm. It's a nice try there, but uh, yeah, Sivir, as you mentioned, really good uh, wave clearing. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, though, is uh, the farm in the mid lane is uh, it's pretty sad. Yeah, that's um, that is some... That is some Broken Fingers level farm right there. Uh, we should call Lucan and the Birdman afterwards to make sure that their fingers are okay. And they have an but I guess we'll have to see. Um, 30 and 35 farm, obviously not what you want to see, especially when you have 66 farm on Juju Denied, who's been farming rather well this game. Had a pretty free yeah. lane just to farm up. And he's going to go back and reap his benefits by getting this early Berserker Fuse, which is so, so strong on Sivir. You get more ricochets out, and you're so hard to hit with the extra movement speed. So bot lane of JBB being really far ahead so far, even if the kills are, are even if the CS difference is only 10. Yeah. Um, you know, Greaves used to be um, even better on Sivir. It used to be oh. the case where you could get... Sivir now, her ricochet only... She can only output three ricochets, no matter what her attack speed is. Um, it used to be the case, you're right, though, where with the with the Berserker's Reeves, you could get a bunch of ricochets. Um, so yeah, she's uh, GG Denied, definitely going to be uh, pretty happy with that one. And we've seen time and time again, GG Denied, uh, skill check, no bamboozles. So we'll have to see if that happens again. But this mid lane, I mean, <clears throat> even when the Birdman does have his last chapter, uh, it's, it's still Lucan that has the pressure. He's still pushing this a bit, but he might be too far up in his lane. He doesn't have any vision of Kid Kirito. Roaming be dangerous. Now. Okay, Lucan does have to burn his flash. I didn't see uh, what happened exactly, but uh, I assume that he just had to burn his flash to dodge out of that set. And GG denied casually 2v1ing in the bottom side of the map. Uh, well, Kid Kirito's roaming is one of the strengths of Sivir can play so far back and still effectively through the waves. Oh, but we have a fight here coming in the top lane. That. Nocturnal as well as the Fear is going to connect. IB is going to get that Conqueror, and that is just going to be a very dead horn. Just a little too far up there in the top lane. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's 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 very hard to, for Orn to actually outplay uh, something like that, a Nocturne, especially when he doesn't have that much armor. Does uh, get his uh, beginning of a Thorn Mail right now, so he will be happy with that. Yeah. You know, Orin definitely one of those champions that kind of just has to stand there and take it, and he, uh, he took it all the way to being dead. But now in the bottom lane, a almost 30 CS lead. They still haven't been pressured by any gangs, but it looks like that's going to be broken. Sackman coming down bot. Oh, but here we come. The set E does land. The sleep on only the Lulu, as the wild growth is on now. No bamboozles. The Victor ultimate will oh. not be enough, and this dive is an absolute disaster, as no bamboozles does manage to survive while Sacknut and Der Birdman are heavily punished by the Equalizer, and that is going to be two kills for nothing for BMO. That is disaster for JBB. That should have been an incredibly easy dive. They knew their jungler wasn't there. They had two people on their way. It should have been a 4v2. Uh, really poor botched dive, and that's going to cost them a lot. Lucan was able to come down. They're going to get the wave pushed out. They're going to get a good back timing on this, but that's got to sting a lot for inside of JBB. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I feel like that, that dive is not only, uh, it is botched, the execution definitely could have been a lot better, but we have to mention that this is Lulu, right? Like, you can't just, yeah, you can't just, like, all in, like, just 100 to 0, some of that is wild growth and polymorph, right? Yeah. Um, it's definitely a bit of a botched dive there. You gotta bait those uh, key abilities out before you uh, go in for that final dive. And the uh, Lucan being there with the equalizer is really key. He manages to get a lot of damage off and slow them down so that they actually die to the turret. As we now see this Drake coming up, uh, the gold is about even, but this Drake 
fight might just be what turns the tide of this game. Yeah, JBB setting up for it uh, beforehand. Uh, JBB obviously has a lot of really great in wa ways to engage with the Lily Asleep, with the Cyber Alt, with the um, Horn Alt. But it looks like BMO might not even be down for the Dragon Fight. They're going to pop the Rift mid, but not make a play as Kid Guido is looking to do the opposite. Guido here, he's looking. He's going to flash Andy at the same time. Uh, he's going to take Lucan back into the waiting arms of the Birdman as he picks that kill up. And now that is a 4v4. Excuse me, that is 4v3 down there at the Drake. But Bahu Uto does have the teleport, while Gorkster does not. They're fighting each other a bit here, but it doesn't really matter. Of course, the Orn being incredibly tanky. As we see, this Drake is most likely going to go down to JBB as it actually resets. Okay, they're going to go back on it. Sakna does not have the smite, but he will be able to take it down. The Jinx ult is way too late, and JBB take a kill and a dragon. Yeah, Mountain Soul is well being the being is going to be the soul that's going to be cast over. Mountain Soul noticeably great on both teams this game. Uh, if you get the Mountain Soul on the side of BMO, you know you have your Rumble, your uh, you have your Rumble, your Nocturne. Uh, your Aatrox, even your Jinx to an extent, are going to be really hard to kill. And on the side of JBB, you know, you have this Orn with the Orn upgrades, you have, um, have this uh, you have this set, so Mountain Soul definitely going to be a key player in this one. Yeah, absolutely. As we do see a bit of more trading here down in the top side, Garkster already used the third part of his Q. He's going to have to flash out of the Ornhorn. Bahu Uto drops the Q, is going Ooh. to slow and slams him six feet under. Bahu Uto finding again a solo kill on the Orn. And he is going to be very happy with that one. Gorkster does not have his teleport. Bahu Uto gets to crash this wave and reset for free. Skid Kirito tries to find an E but won't find it quite yet. Yeah, that's gotta feel bad. For, uh, for the si side of BMO, Bahu Uto completely risks his ult and is still able to get the kill without expending the flash. So he... I don't want to say a huge outplay, just a huge misplay by Gangster to think he can fight that. And that gold in the side of J, um, JBB and on Bahuoto is going to be so crucial. If he's in the side lane and, there's, uh, and the Aatrox can't really contest with him, there's no one that can uh, for the side of BMO. So it's going to be on Bahuoto and the side of JBB to see if they can push this advantage and make this Orin this unstoppable killing machine that he got close to you last game. Yeah, uh, Orden is going to be a meaty boy, if, uh, if they, especially if they get this Mountain Soul, of course. As we see Sacknan actually going for the Everfrost. Um, I'm not a fan. I've seen Everfrost on Nidalee. Um, I, I, I see why you could possibly like argue that it's possible on an Everfrost, but I really don't like it. Um, yeah. As we see the Paranoia here coming down, Jay Beach is pulling the trigger. The Fear is going to land on GG Denied. It looks like this will be a one-for-one -one trade for now, as uh, Aatrox is going to be put to sleep as No Bamboozles will be suplexed, but he doesn't have the damage to finish that kill off as No Bamboozles will flash out of the fire for now. But now it is a 3v3. Gorkser, he's going to be okay as the Lulu joins and pushes that Wild Growth button. And for now, both teams are going to walk out of out of this fight uh, as it's only a two for one in favor of BMO. Yeah, JBB should be pretty happy with the fact that it was only a two for one. That was very careless by the side, um, by GG Denied and Kid Kido to be so far pushed up uh, when they know that the top laner has TP available. On top of that, it was two really late TPs by the side of JBB though. I imagine that was because they couldn't find a word due to the Nocturnal. But even still, a really strong, decisive play by BMO, and a rather lax and uninterested response by JBB. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a... I think it's just a good, proactive play from BMO. Um, that paranoia was uh, pretty good, and the fact that GG Denied did uh, get hit by the fear is definitely very crucial. Um, as we'll see now that the gold lead is uh, still... Um, about 1k gold ahead for JBB, uh, which is uh, 
you know, kind of curious considering that uh, BMO does have that kill advantage, but of course those objectives do matter quite a lot, as well as the CS. Yeah, CS, CS leads across the board. There's 30 in the bot lane, crucially for GG denied. Um, it hasn't translated to any components yet, but with her just backing, with Stiver just backing, I'm sure it will. There's about a 15 CS in the mid lane, which isn't too unexpected from what you see from her range versus melee matchup. As a knockdown that gets dropped, then it's second. We do have the paranoia as we see that Everfrost that I was talking about going to actually be put to use. I'm going to root JB Beach as the equalizer was used. Did not manage to find some extra damages again. We have a fight in the top lane. The Ornhorn is going to pull through. That uh, Infernal Chains is a little late to cancel the Bahu Utot ultimate. He is going to manage to take down his W. The gravity field does come down, but this Aatrox is very, very dead as he gets collapsed on by pretty much the entirety of JBB. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, so unfortunate there. I I don't know for sure, but I have to feel like the gangster just me pinging his mid lane. Uh, that mm -hmm. one felt like he wasn't quite sure that uh, the enemy uh, JBB was completely missing, but the MO is going to take this dragon in response, but JBB doesn't look like they're going to give it up that easily. Yeah, that, that positioning advantage, having everyone rotate to the top lane, does mean oh, that JBB Rumble. are very late onto this Drake. The Drake does go down to BMO, though. And now No Bamboozles is in trouble. He has a wild growth on him, but it is not enough to keep him alive, as animating dead is... Well, he is going to be dead. I'm not sure if he's going to be animating, but he's certainly going to die. Yeah, that was just bad positioning by BMO. It looked so good with Rumble. Um, on the back line, but Rumble, without a completed item, wasn't able to do this huge amount of damage. And GG Denied being so far ahead was so crucial, they just fully ran down the bottom lane of BMO. They do lose the dragon, I believe, but yep. it, it um, but they get two kills for it in the end, so a little bit of a uh, advantage for JBB it's there. Bahu, so he's going to have to flash out. The Aatrox ultimate is down. The first part of the Q does land, but the rest doesn't. And Bahuto is just going to be fine. As, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if um, Rumble had his ultimate at the beginning of the fight. We saw that JBB was very grouped up. And if he did have mm. his ultimate, that would have been a very, very good ultimate. But I suspect that he didn't. Yeah. At least, honestly, I hope so. Because uh, not pressing R I... would be absolutely criminal there. Yeah, no. If uh, if he didn't click R, then for sure I'd have to investigate with broken fingers. <laughs> However, J Beach. Uh, yeah, I mean... I would say that uh, there is a fight, but uh, it's more of an int, as uh, JB just decided to press the paranoia button and uh, just goes in. Bit of a Jarvan syndrome there, where you kind of uh, engage far away of your team, and you're like, guys, where's the follow-up? Without realizing that yeah. your team is two screens away. Um, as Birdman, gonna get be hit by the zap. What This teleport is very questionable, as Bahu Utot is just going to teleport on some traps. He is going to find the Ornhorn on to animating dead. As maybe he'll prove me wrong, but the wild growth is going to keep him alive for quite a bit longer. The AoE damage from No Bamboozles is pretty decent, but do they actually manage to get any kind of lethal damage here is the question. It doesn't look like it, as uh, JBB now are just taking kills across the map for pretty much for free. Yeah, JBB had to expend two ultimates for, uh, for the pick, but they know they were able to do that because they picked JB off earlier. The MO just seemed to have forgotten that they ha it was 4v5 and played far too aggressively. They're only going to lose one field for it, but it is going to be a, quite a large amount of tempo and potentially the mid tower. And yeah, it looks like it has... Uh, okay, Sack that is just dead. Um, I believe that was a paranoia equalizer combo. <laughs> Uh, pretty devastating. As we do see again, Bahu Utoed here, he's on the offensive on the Orn. Gorgster, he's trying to run for his life as Bahu Utot is going to get uh, pulled back by the Infernal Chains. The Q here is not going to hit Gorgster as now they're trying to turn on ba onto Bahu Utot, but he does have the so Thorn tank. Mail. He is indeed very tanky as the Zap does hit. It's going to slow him down, but does it really matter? They're actually going to go for it. Gorgster! Oh, the heal Ooh. does come through, and it's going to be a 1 for 0. But man, that was close. Yeah, not worth it from the side of BMO. They went one for one, but the heal was expended on top of losing mid lane tower. They're now three towers to one with only the mid lane tower fallen. 
uh, with a 3K gold lead for JVB and a um, huge power differential in the mid and bottom lane, it looks like JVB is um, gonna. It's gonna be on them to pressure this game and really take these fights. Make sure, make sure that they can continue to press their advantage, um, and that to not throw. Because if they just keep playing standard and keep playing, you know, good fundamental League of Legends, this game is theirs. Uh, is in their pocket right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we did mention that the scaling from the Jinx Lulu is uh, very, very good. But the thing is, you know, when you have an Orn that can kind of soak up a lot of that damage and uh, Orn get, dishes out those ornaments and makes it so that the late game scaling is kind of equalized, right? Yeah. Uh, as Gorgster here, he's kind of caught. The paranoia is going to land. It doesn't look like the fear will. As uh, Red Kirito here is going to suplex J Beach down, and oh my god, the damage is definitely there. GG and I is mailing into the Atrox, and that's very questionable. The Gorgster will manage to trade one for his life, but that is going to be a double kill over to the Lilia, and crucially, the dragon is almost spawning. Yeah, they try to go for the fight when they have the number advantage. You can see they go on to GG Denai, but he gets away so easily with that extra speed from Sivir, and Kid Kirito is able to take out J Beach for sure. GP denied then, I guess, legs out in the middle of the fight and decides to punch Aatrox. Not entirely sure what happened, but he gives up a kill for free, but it shouldn't matter too much as JVB should be able to still get the dragon as well as the kills. Yeah, absolutely very crucial here. One thing that we do have to keep in mind is the Mega Death Rocket. Could put potential for a steal, but it actually off cooldown, so we will not see a Mega Death Rocket steal right now. As it looks like this Drake might just be free. Yep, this uh, Drake is just going to go over to JBB, and that is now two Drakes to two for both teams. As uh, now BMR positioning around this mid lane, but it doesn't look like they're going to do anything with it quite yet. Yeah, another nice pickup by JBB is going to put the gold ahead, 4k gold up now. BMO should be starting to feel a little bit desperate. They're uh, behind in almost everywhere that matters, and by everywhere that matters, I mean everywhere, and... There's and JBB is now looking to pressure Baron and potentially go for a fight. Yeah, uh, it seems like they were just checking if uh, BMO was uh, doing some kind of sneaky desperation bird attempts, but uh, it doesn't look like it's going to happen quite yet. As uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 difficult, right? Because BMO BMO's composition has champions that want to do slightly different things. Um, J Beach and Lucan and Gorkster kind of want to go for these mid-game fights where they can pick someone off and do a lot of damage. Well, uh, Jinx and Lulu don't really care about that. Uh, they just want to kind of stay alive and fart. <laughs> um, so you do see a bit of a disconnect in the objectives here from BMO. Yeah, not, not completely on the same page. Uh, um, as we see now, it is... Um, it is going to be the Birdman going bottom lane. They have both teleports up on the side of JBB, and they have no teleports up on the side of BMO. JBB should be fully aware of this, so it wouldn't be surprising if they try to make a cross map play around this time. There's no objectives on the flat side. It looks like but... the paranoia is going to come down. Let's see if the fear connects. Yes, it does. <laughs> the Blast Plant will be taken away by JB. She is going to find himself on the other side of the Dragon Pit, but JBB don't know this. Uh, that's a pretty funny turn of events there, as they will just pick up a 1 for 0, and that's a very good pick. Yep, the smart pick by the side of BMO. Uh, Sakna just purely overextending, nothing about that. Didn't have the support to be that far pushed up. It's Bahuoto is looking to put Grogster back in his place. It looks like we have a bit of a wet noodle fight, but as I say that, Bahuoto actually does a lot of damage to Gorgster. Gorgster keeps going for these cues, but I don't know if it's going to work out for you. As the Ornhor misses because he is polymorphed, he is going to manage to knock up two into the wall, but Bahu Tote is slowed and he is most likely going to go down. That is no bamboozle picking up his fourth kill, and you're definitely going to be happy with that. That was a crucial polymorph by amazing, um, Animating Dead. Unfortunately, Bahu Oto fails the flash right after, but it's fair and that's the objective for BM. Yeah, it looks like they're starting this one up as... Uh... These Victor Rays, you know, they're scary as well as a GG denied. Those pizzas going over the wall could definitely be pretty scary as far as poke goes. 
as the bowling ball is going to land on one. The Drowsy will actually be used, but this oh. Equalizer does massive amounts of damage. This Corridor is absolutely deadly, and no... Oh, and this Suplex is going to go over the wall. Lucan and Kid Kirito are completely fighting it out here, but Kid Kirito, I don't know if you have the lethal damage to finish this one off. Oh, he hits W, but it's so close. Lucan doesn't actually die, and the emote spam is, is on point. And Kid Kirito is going to die. GG Denied tries to get something in return. But man, JBB, they're just going into the praying hands of the Equalizer. Yeah, I don't think you could have a risk fight for JBB. They didn't have the front line there. Um, might, might I add the huge front line, almost complete unkillable front line. Bahuoto was still dead, and they funneled directly into the Equalizer. And Lucan, with a huge ultimate, is going to be able to shred through their whole team. Unfortunately, they aren't able to get everyone. GG Denied was able to escape, um, as well as the Birdman, if I remember correctly. So not everyone, but way too overambitious by GGG is going to put this game much closer than it was before. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, how we weren't sure about how the Rumble is going to work. But if you can pull equalizers like that, then the Rumble is going to work out just great. Uh as he is now on five kills, he does have two items, and more crucially, this Jinx is close to her Infinity Edge. And with uh, this dragon spawning up soon, we'll have to see how this plays out. As, uh, you know, the team fighting has been pretty even on both sides. It's really, really close. This is a game-deciding match. So this is uh, very tense. We can imagine that the players are quite on edge. As we do see JVB here coming forward, trying to get some vision as BMO are kind of split up here. Yeah. Uh, Uto does have the teleport. As uh, JVB here is running down the mid lane, the bowling ball did land. They're not going to go for a drowsy just yet, but Kid Hero will activate the Turbo Chem Tech. He's not going to manage oh. to find someone. Sacknut is actually flashing over the wall for some reason. The bowling ball will land. That is not why he's flashing dragon. over the wall. As uh, Amazing Dead will use the Wild Growth on himself, but look at No Bamboozles. He is free hitting for now, but maybe not for long as the Supplex will go way too deep as No Bamboozles. There we go. That is the damage I was talking about. The Gravity Field and the Ultimate from the Victor will take him down as he steps way too far forward. Gorkser now. He's 1v4. The health bars are really low, but that is not the target that you want to hit. And GG Denied will manage to take a double kill here. BMO does manage to take the Drake, though, because meanwhile, J Beach was taking the Dragon. Yeah, 4v5 here. Another botch played by JBB. They go way too hard to take out the Lulu support. Fortunately, No Bamboozles steps up a little bit too far and, and dies for it. But now it's just Gangster, who's being danced and pranced about by Sakna. They're able to take him down and kite him out. As now the TP's coming in, and it's JBB looking for Baron. They're looking for Baron indeed, but this is a very risky one. Oh, oh my god, no, Sakna just dies to the Baron. <laughs> and that will be, uh... Yeah, well, you know... Can we, we get a replay on how he died to Baron? That was... <laughs> I mean, uh, no bamboozles was dead. That should have been the freest Baron. <laughs> we walk up and he... Thank you for the replay. He just gets Oh, hurt. no, he got tentacled. Ugh. Uh... I'm sorry to shame you like that much, Sakna, but you know it had to be done. Uh, now now we see, unfortunately, that isn't going to be the Baron. That's rather big for JBB. That should have been free. Uh, with that Baron, they would have been able to get all the other towers almost for sure and probably crack open in him with, with that on the side. So a rather large misplay is going to cost them the Baron. Fortunately, it's not one of those cases where they give it up, but... Even still, um, even sale. That one's got to sting for the fans of JBB. Yeah, absolutely. Dying to Baron is never a good feeling, uh, especially when you get tentacled and up in the air like that. But uh, you know that Baron uh, was potentially definitely something game changing for JBB. But uh, again, I have to mention, you know, the Jinx Ultimate is quite strong for these types of objectives, and with those low HP bars. I kind of was imagining in my head, if, but no bamboozles just alts the Baron. I think like. He gets two kills at the very least there. Yeah. Um, it won't happen, I guess. So maybe uh, Sacknut actually just saved his team. Uh, ah, yeah. the, the the intentional int. I'm, I'm sorry. I, we, we shouldn't have flamed saying it was a misplay. That was the biggest brain play at all time from Sacknut. Mm -hmm. Now they're looking aggressive. The Birdman's not around. He's in bot lane. He does have TP available. But no, it is just going to be JBB backing up. 
not overextending, but pings are falling onto Baron now for the side of BMO. It looks like they might have to play check this. Yeah, it does look like it. I don't really have a lot of vision here. As, uh, again, the vision fights are pretty intense. Gorgster here, he is on the south side of this fight, but JPP only have three. Yeah, but JPP is pretty close. Run and play it slow. They have the Birdman in the bottom lane. He has TP available, and there's no one matching him, so he can just stay there and continue to fight, um, continue to get that tower for now. Well yeah, as we see Bahu Toad here, the Ornhorn is coming through. It is going to hit on Animating Dead. The Equalizer, though, is pretty good, and it's still a 5v4. Remember, the Birdman isn't here. And now the uh, the Q, the Lilia Q, will manage to find two, but it doesn't matter. The Sleepy was not activated, and that's just a two for two. I'm not sure how Gorkster and the other two fall down. I guess we'll have to see. Yeah, well, they weren't there, and crucially, Sivir is untouched by this Equalizer. She's able to kite back. He deals so much damage to the Aatrox. He eventually is able also to take down the Nocturne. Um, just an AD carry being able to free hit it is going to do so much damage at this point in the what game. What happened? We what? were in the... Re yeah, wait. J -j 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 I just died, and so did Bahu Toads. Well, uh, we don't know how that happened. Uh, maybe if we get a replay Birdman's on top of the replay. Well. Yeah, this is uh, very interesting here, as the Birdman is basically stuck under his turret here. Uh, as uh, Yeah, you're pretty much dead. Um, <laughs> the extra TP in for the secure, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As a kid, Kirita is a bit away, uh, a bit too far for that E. Um, as now they could look for Baron. I'm not too sure why they're not looking for it quite yet. Oh, the bowling ball will fall, and Sagnut will actually manage to pick up the shutdown. That one was a sniper from downtown. Sagnut picking up that fat shutdown is going to be very happy with that one. Yeah, def definitely not going to be too upset. As the dragon spawning in 30 seconds, I want to crucially draw your eyes to the itemization on the Jinx. Or GG denied at, rather. Oh, but Gorkster, he's just dead here. GG denied is just melting through this front line. I mean, Aatrox isn't the tankiest, but still, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, the, the, at least what I was saying, such a crucial difference in the Lord Dominic's regards. Well, uh, or in the difference of frontline, I should say, compared to the AD carries, there's still no, no Lord Dominic's regards. And this is a three-tank item with Tabai's Orn. It's going to be so hard for No Bamboozles to get through him efficiently, especially compared to the amount of damage GG Denied is going to do, as we just saw the Gangsters. And now it looks like JBB is um, pressuring the Baron. Absolutely, and you know something that that's kind of interesting is that Aatrox is not really a frontliner. At this point in the game, he doesn't do much. He can be considered like a semi-frontline, especially with the Lulu, but JBB, they're just absolutely melting this Baron. The Equalizer is going to come down, but is it actually what? going to be enough? No, it is not. The Drowsy hits three. Lucan goes golden, but it's not for long as an an uh, Animating Dead, excuse me, is going to manage to use the Wild Growth to get out of there. Kid Kirito does not find the E. He might just have to die for this one. No, he doesn't. He uses the W and he'll be just fine. As Bahuto. Oh, but no bamboozles. No bamboozles. That positioning Why? is very interesting. As he manages to get a kill, Risa and just runs out excited. That's a pretty interesting one. As Gangster is actually going to use his ultimate here. I'm not sure what you're looking for, buddy. You're just pretty much dead. That is very out of position. As Nocturne is just going to base inside of their face, I guess? And uh, Gigi did not... Uh, yeah. He's absolutely huge. He's untouched. Uh, Gorks are there. Uh, yeah, not too sure. That smells a bit like tilt to me. Mm -hmm. um, as this inhibitor now is just going to go down for JBB. Yeah, that was a strange series of events. Um... You know, whoever had the the best jeans flank of all time on their bingo card can, I guess, check that one off. Not something we see <laughs> particularly often, but not nine two on the jinx now. Still, they have the uh, as five items, two of which are the bonus attack speed. You don't often see uh, the runans with the rapid fire cannons. Normally, either or. So she is going to have to choose between the life steal or between between the life steal of bloodthirster. Or between the armor shred of Lord Dominix, and it looks like she's gonna have to go over to Lord Dominix just to deal with this horn. Um, so definitely a bit of quest questionable itemization by the side of 
Jinx as GG Denied is looking to even put more Yeah, GG Denied does so much damage. He's going to take the Blast Cone over the other side of the wall. And it's actually somehow going to work. The Equalizer will manage to take the GA. So that's something that uh, BMO can be happy about, I guess. As uh, Sacknut here is going to manage to find a Sleepy, but not much more. Yeah. As they're, they're now pushing for this inhibitor. The Ornhorn is coming down. The Ornhorn manages to hit one. Will they actually manage to find the kill here as they're going down? No, it doesn't look like they, they're just going to be pressuring these inhibitors. And these waves of inhibitors and super minions, they have to do something about it or else this game is just gone. The pizza almost kills Gorkster. He's going to manage to kite away from that one, but at this point, this game is just done. There's nothing that they can do. They can't clear the wave. The super minions are in the base with the Baron buff, and it's just going to be the minions that take this game and GBB that take the series.